Hello, and we're back to the DFAM for one video. Um, I had a couple different questions, and this is going to answer both questions, actually. Um, one was about, you know, plugging a Keystep Pro into this thing. Um, another was about a demo video that Moog had made, um, and how they do that. Um, so the answer to that second question is that um, in the announcement video for the DFAM, um, Moog multi-tracked um, what they were doing. So, like, you're hearing a lot going on, but it's because there's three tracks. Um, so there's a there's a hi-hat track running at eight steps. Um, there's a snare drum also running at eight steps, I believe. And then there's a kick drum running at 16 steps. Um, you can, you know, get snare and hi-hat and kick all going at the same time on this, but it's a little bit of a tricky thing because when you start moving the pitch of the oscillator to create um, kick drum melodies, like 808 melodies, um, that screws with everything else. Um, so what I figured out is that they just have three tracks running. They did hi-hat, snare, and kick all separately. Um, so that goes into the question of pairing a sequencer with this. Um, so I don't have a key step, but it's all the same process. Um, basically, the the thing to know about the DFAM is there's only one trigger in. Um, so when you hit the trigger, like all the oscillators go. So there's no way to like totally separate this. Um, you can do some fun stuff with it though, um, using clock instead of trigger, and I'll I'll get into that. Um, so first, the basics. If you're looking to plug into this, you want to go out of your CV pitch out of your sequencer into either VCO1 or 2, um, whatever's turned up over here. So, you know, I'm looking at VCO1. I'm going from my pitch out of my sequencer. And for those of you who are keeping track, I'm using a Stilson Hammer sequencer. I'm going into VCO1, then, you know, my sequencer controls the pitch. <clears throat> I'm taking the gate out of my sequencer and I'm going into trigger. Um, so what that does is um, it's going to trigger the note at whatever velocity is set here, you know, whatever step I'm at. So that's something very important to note because I was like I, <laughs> on this step and I was like, I can't get this to work. <laughs> um, but I figured out when you get to, you know, whatever velocity is set here, uh, it'll trigger at that velocity. So I just turned all of these up so I didn't make that mistake. Um, and then as far as, like, tuning this thing, you just have to use a tuner. Um, like, my sequencer is set to D, but it doesn't really matter because, you know, here's my oscillator frequency here. So, you know, if I play this um, sequence... Put on headphones because this is like 808 style. So, you know, if I want to tune this to whatever, you know, not nah, gonna tune that to a C. Okay, so we've got our 808 thing happening there, and it's just the one oscillator, and we're good. You know, we can run this. Um, so that's that's really like the basic part interesting thing you can think about though is that you can separate all this out because like I can use a clock out of my sequencer instead of a gate out okay so at this point this becomes live so we're going to use the clock from the sequencer to advance this one right so what does that gain us well what it means is that I can control the pitch of VCO1 completely independently of whatever is happening here. Um, and that has some interesting results because, you know, I can have a 16-step sequence running here and an 8-step sequence running into VCO2. And then we get all this, like, stuff happening. Um, so let me give you an example of that. And this is sort of a dry run, so this might be hysterically bad. Okay, so there's VCO1, right? If I turn up VCO2 and I set this switch down, so what's happening is we're going to have 
two different cool so now I've got an 8 step sequence running against a 16 step sequence now depending on how your sequencer works right I could set my external sequencer to run at some bizarre setting so like what if I put my external sequencer at 14 steps so now I've got 8 versus 14 here let me see if I can make this more like obvious So there's our 14 step sequence against our 8. <laughs> and then, you know, we can do some stuff like turn on the hard sing. And now all of a sudden we've got like all this crazy overtone stuff happening. Try this. Let's try this. If we set this switch up so it's affecting both. <laughs> Alright, so that's wild. So we're sort of adding voltage. It's not working great, but it's working. Um, and you could probably massage this a little bit. Yeah, so we've got 8 steps of pitch running here and 14 steps of pitch running outside on the external sequencer. Um, so we've got a pretty complex pattern here, and I'll bet if we speed it up we can get some crazy stuff happening. Other thoughts, what if, I don't know if this works. Yeah, it doesn't, kind of messes everything up. If we plug in a trigger, we get um, sort of a double cycle rhythmically happening. Um, but because of this aforementioned problem where, you know, if a trigger happens when the velocity is down, then you hear nothing anyway. So we get, it doesn't always seem like it's going to work. Um, one more thing to note, um, the trigger input is very sensitive, um, so my sequencer puts out way too much voltage out of the gate to actually trigger. Um, I had to turn my gate voltage down like to about three quarters of the way, um, so if you're experiencing that where you're like, why won't this trigger, just try turning your gate voltage down, like turn the actual um, amount of gate that's coming out of your sequencer, and it should um, line up. Uh, so I hope that gives you some ideas to play with. <laughs>